Hi there, this is Elena from the Burr Public Library and today I wanted to share with you some movies that we have in our collection that you may not be aware that we own and these are all available um, to be picked up through our new curbside service so you can uh, borrow these anytime, just give us a call, send us an email or request them through our online catalog. Um, so I just want to share with you um, some highlights of uh, movies from our collection and I'm going to start with the two that I haven't actually seen because they're the ones I have um, uh, the least to say about. Um, so first is uh, The Lighthouse and that is um, with uh, Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe and this movie takes place in the um, 1890s on a small island uh, in uh, New England. So kind of a local story. And um, this is a story really about how these two lighthouse keepers are coming undone during their time um, on this island. And this is definitely going to be a movie that's not for everybody. Um, I know the people who have already watched it had some mixed opinions. Um, and right in the description of it on the back it's called Hallucinatory. Um, so probably not for everybody, um, but this did get um, a lot of uh, hype more recently when the, um, the Oscar happened so um, if you're interested in the lighthouse we do have that available um, another one this is the other one that I have not seen yet but I'm very interested in um, that is Jojo Rabbit and I have heard excellent things about this um, this was up for uh, best picture and uh, this is a story that takes place during World War II and uh, we follow a little boy named Jojo and he has just found out that his mother uh, who's played by Scarlett Johansson is uh, hiding a Jewish girl in their attic and this is a satire, so it's um, a, a comedy film, and he has a imaginary friend who is Hitler. Um, so again, maybe not for everybody, um, but this has gotten wonderful reviews, and um, the people I know that have seen it already have loved it, and I know I'm interested to check this one out. Um, so that's Jojo Rabbit. And then um, the rest of these, I can uh, tell you from personal experience, they all get a thumbs up. Um, so this one we've had for um, a little while, but I don't think gets a lot of attention. That is called The Best of Enemies. Um, this is a movie that came out in 2019 that I admit completely slipped under my radar. I had no idea this movie existed until we got it for the library, and um, I was blown away by it when I watched it. It is fabulous, so I highly recommend this. Um, this movie is uh, based on a real story, and it's stars um, Taraji P. Henson as Anne Atwater and uh, Sam Rockwell as um, C.P. Ellis. And actually Sam Rockwell is going to be a recurring theme here because he is also in Jojo Rabbit and he's in another movie um, that I've got coming up uh, to recommend as well. Um, so this story takes place in uh, 1971 and it takes place in Durham, North Carolina and uh, the town of Durham is holding a community summit to discuss desegregating their schools and they have um, two people who are chosen to uh, co-chair the summit. So one is Ann Atwater who is a civil rights activist and the other is C.P. Ellis um, and he is a leader of the Ku Klux Klan. Um, so this is a really powerful movie. It's really interesting. It's something that I was not aware ever happened in history. Um, really interesting movie. Uh, highly recommend this. So this is um, the best of enemies. Uh, next we have A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood with uh, Tom Hanks as Mr. Rogers and uh, Matthew Reese as a journalist named Tom Junod. And um, this story is about uh, that journalist uh, Tom who's having a really tough time in his life and he's, um, you know, really uh, cynical and he's just this jaded uh, a journalist who gets assigned to profile Mr. Rogers and he does not want to do it. That's not the kind of fluffy pieces that he writes. Um, so he really doesn't believe that Mr. Rogers is as great as everybody says he is. And this is a story about how they developed a, a real life friendship. And um, I cannot emphasize this enough. This is not a movie about Mr. Rogers. He is in it, but it is about the journalist, and it is about his relationship with Mr. Rogers, but also with his family. Um, so Mr. Rogers is like a, a something that ties the whole story together, but it is not about him, really. Um, and I think that as long as you go into this movie with that in mind, then you'll enjoy it. But if you think this is going to be just about Mr. Rogers, you're going to be disappointed. Um, so this is, a, this is a good one, as long as, like I said, you have the right frame of mind going in to realize what this story is, is really about. Um, so that is A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. 
Um, next is uh, The Farewell. And uh, this is also uh, based on a real story, but the way they um, say it here on the movie cover is based on an actual lie. And this is a story about um, a... Uh, uh, well, the main character's name is, is Billy. And Billy has just found out that her grandmother in China has uh, cancer and she's going to be dying. And uh, apparently what is uh, not unheard of to do in China is that you don't tell somebody when they're dying. Um, it's That's a burden for the family that you don't tell the person who is dying that they're dying. You just let them live their life as happily as possible. So her family has chosen not to tell the grandmother that she's going to be dying and instead that they have arranged to have a wedding and that is their, it's, it's a lie, but that's the excuse they have made um, to all come together in China to see the grandmother one last time. Um, so this is a story that's about family, it's about different cultures um, because uh, Billy is American born Chinese so she um, doesn't really um, excuse me, she's actually born in China but raised in the United States. Um, she, I forget how long she lived in China, but it was not very long. Um, but she uh, has been brought up with the American culture, so she doesn't really quite understand why the family is lying to the grandmother. She doesn't think that's right. Um, and it's, despite the title and despite the description I just gave you, this is not a um, overly emotional film. I went into this prepared to bawl my eyes out the entire time, um, and I ended up laughing, and um, I had a big smile on my face even at the end. This is not a huge tragic story. Um, this is actually, it was kind of really uplifting. Um, it was a, a beautiful story about this family, and um, it is, like I said, it is more of a comedy than it is... Um, and it is a sad story. Um, so don't be put off by the title or the subject. I do highly recommend giving this a shot. And I will say 90% of this is in um, Mandarin, so there is subtitles, so just um, be aware of that if that's something that you have uh, difficulty with. Um, so that's The Farewell. Um, and then I've got here uh, Ford versus Ferrari, which was also, I believe, up for Best Picture um, this past year. So this is a story that takes place in um, the 1960s and centers around the 24 hours of Le Mans in France. And um, this follows uh, two men. One is uh, Matt Damon, and he plays uh, Carol Shelby, and he is a uh, American car designer. And the other is uh, Christian Bale, and he plays Ken Miles, and he's a British... Um, car race car driver and the two men work together to create a car by Ford um, that will beat Ferrari at the 24 hours of Le Mans so um, this is a story that is great even if you're not a big car person so I don't know a lot about cars <laughs> um, nor do I particularly care about the race they were doing um, but I still really enjoyed this this was still something that that I found um, really interesting and really pulled me in I wanted to see you know are they gonna beat Ferrari um, what's gonna happen um, so this is this is a good choice um, uh, even if like I said if your if your interest really doesn't lie in cars so um, this is a uh, Ford versus Ferrari and then I've got uh, bombshell. Um, so this is a story about um, the a couple of women from Fox News uh, taking down the CEO of Fox um, based on his history of sexual harassment. And uh, this is a phenomenal movie. This this blew me away. I knew it was going to be good, but I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. Um, so this follows uh, Charlize Theron, Nicole Kidman, and Margot Robbie are our main uh, characters. And uh, Charlize plays um, Megyn Kelly, and uh, Nicole Kidman plays Gretchen Carlson, and then Margot Robbie is actually just like a composite character. She's not anybody real, but she basically they took a bunch of real people's stories and um, put them all together to be um, the character that Margot Robbie plays. And so this follows the initial um, break, breaking news of um, the CEO uh, sexually harassing his employees and then the women of Fox really starting to all band together and come forward and um, speak out against what was happening to them. This was um, a really, really powerful film and uh, I highly, highly recommend this one. So that's Bombshell. Um, I've got three more. This is uh, Where'd You Go, Bernadette, um, with Kate Blanchett, and this is based on the novel by Maria Semple. Um, you don't have to have read the book to enjoy this. Uh, I have read it, and 
enjoyed the movie and my family had not read it and also really enjoyed the movie so uh, you don't need to have that background if you don't choose to read the book first. Um, this is a, a little hard to explain without kind of spoiling it so I'm just going to give you the bare minimums. This is a story about um, Bernadette who is played by Kate Blanchett uh, who was a very famous architect and an extremely creative person and she had something happen that really um, took away her passion for for her creative outlet and kind of sent her spiraling and uh, really kind of became a recluse as she is just her and her husband and her daughter and this story really follows how she starts to um, reclaim her passion again and start to find her uh, find her love for for create her creative outlets um, this is uh, excellent I, they did a really good job um, translating the book into adapting it into a, a movie um, I, I can't honestly say that I remember all the details of the book has been so long but what I did remember was was here um, and uh, again, like I said, you don't have to have read it first. So um, this is a movie that is um, a little bit drama and a little bit comedy as well. So it's ultimately a very uplifting story. Um, so this is Where Did You Go, Bernadette. And then the last two, um, this is the one I've seen most recently. Uh, this is uh, Richard Jewell. And oh, guess what? Sam Rockwell's in this one too. So that's, I think, three that we had with Sam Rockwell. And this is about um, the bombing that happened during the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta at a musical performance. And uh, the security guard who discovered the bomb and warned people and kept them away and, and uh, kept this from being a bigger tragedy than it was, um, his name was Richard Jewell. And at first he was praised for being a hero and then he became the FBI's number one suspect and they thought maybe he was just trying to be a hero cop and that he planted the bomb himself so that he could um, be the one that saved the day. So a majority of this movie is just about the FBI investigation into him and it is incredibly infuriating to watch. Um, I was not familiar with this story. This was something that I was very young when this really happened so I didn't know who Richard Jewell uh, was going in. I didn't realize what the case was against him and how that all played out. Um, but this was a really, really well done movie and like I said, it's really infuriating because you're going to get so mad at the FBI and how they handle um, this investigation of Richard Jewell. Um, so that's just called Richard Jewell. And then last but not least, probably my favorite one out of all of these that we have is Knives Out and this has um, quite the all-star cast. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis is in it. Uh, Captain America himself, Chris Evans, um, James Bond, we have Daniel Craig right there. There's a lot of famous people in this. And uh, Christopher Plummer. This movie I expected to be um, like a spoof of murder mysteries and it is not. Um, so I completely misunderstood the previews for this film and I was pleasantly surprised. Um, I went in with zero expectations and then gave it a perfect 10 because I loved it so much and so did everybody in my family. This is a story about um, the Thromby family and they are interesting. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of problems in this family. They are a very eclectic bunch of people and they are all brought together for the birthday of Harlan Thromby um, and that is Christopher Plummer and um, then Harlan Thromby is found dead and so starts a murder investigation to figure out who among this a bizarre family um, is responsible for killing Harlan Thromby and it is hilarious and it is so good and um, I cannot recommend this enough. If you like murder mysteries um, you absolutely need to check this out um, and so that is uh, Knives Out. Uh, so those are just some of the movies that we have here that uh, you may not have known that we had. Some of them came in while we were closed. We had ordered them before we had shut down in March and they have since come in so um, you, you probably wouldn't even know we had them so I just wanted to make sure that um, everyone knew what sort of things we had here on our shelves. I know it's hard when you can't come in and browse, um, but you can request these at any time using our catalog right on our website, um, or you can just give us a call or send us an email. Um, so until next time, uh, happy reading and uh, thanks for watching.